What are the best and worst triceps exercises for muscle growth? Well, in this video, I'll be ranking 20 of the most popular movements on a tier list from S for super to F for fail. And at the end, I'll crown one exercise as the best of the best and one as the worst of the worst. And to make sure your favorite tricep exercise doesn't end up in F tier, it needs to tick three boxes. One, it must provide high tension, especially in the stretched position. Two, it needs to feel good, meaning it doesn't cause pain and it has a nice smooth resistance profile. Three, it needs to have a simple progression. That means you can easily add some weight or a rep from week to week. Now, as I'm sure you know, there are three heads of the triceps, hence the tri prefix. There's the lateral head, the medial head, and the long head. The long head beefs up your triceps from the rear. The lateral head gives the triceps that croissant shape and the medial head runs down the middle, adding shape to the arm as a whole. And so when we're ranking exercises, we'll need to consider which movements will emphasize which aspect to ensure proportional development. Let's start with the most popular triceps exercise, the press down. Press downs will hit all three heads of the triceps, but probably grow the medial and lateral heads a little better than the long head. There are three main ways people do these, using a rope, using a bar, and using a reverse grip. The advantage of using a rope is that you can really drive the handles apart at the bottom, which will help some people feel a harder contraction in their triceps. Granted, this motion is mainly happening at the wrists, so I don't think it's adding a whole lot of real contractile benefit to the triceps. It's more of a mind-muscle connection thing. The downside of using the rope is that you just won't be able to load as much tension onto the triceps. Earlier this week, I did an experiment where I tested how many reps I could get using the rope versus using the bar while keeping the weight and my technique exactly the same. I got 12 reps with the rope and 16 reps with the bar. That's four extra reps at the same weight simply by using a bar. And that's because the rope attachment is far less rigid and stable. And so some of the tension coming from the cable stack is being lost through having to stabilize a loose rope with your forearms. And so while the rope might gain a point in the feels good department, it loses a point in the overload department. The rope press down is going in B tier. With the bar press down, the movement will feel a lot more stable, which will direct more tension to your triceps. The cable will provide more or less even tension on the triceps throughout the range of motion, and the bar should actually help you feel more locked in, which is a good thing. And you can easily overload by adding a little weight or a rep from week to week. The bar press down is very close to being an S tier, but because it never actually gets the triceps into a big stretch at the top, it isn't quite as good as some of the other options that we'll cover in a minute. And for that reason, it's going in A tier. But it's definitely an exercise that I strongly recommend, and I do myself pretty much every single week. Now, the reverse grip press down is the worst of the three options, in my opinion. That's because turning your palms up won't actually change much for your triceps biomechanically, but it will limit their strength output, especially if your grip becomes a limiting factor. In my experiment, I actually only got 10 reps with an underhand grip, making it the weakest of the three options. Now, I know some people do really feel this variation hitting their triceps better, and that's probably because with an underhand grip, you can get your forearm bones out of the way at the top, but I really doubt it's worth the reduction in overload potential, and so the reverse grip press down is going in C tier. The overhead cable triceps extension is a similar movement where you're just bending and extending your elbow, except for one crucial difference. You move your arms up overhead. This actually makes a world of difference for the long head. That's because the long head is the only head that crosses both the elbow joint and the shoulder joint. So all three heads of the triceps straighten the elbow out, but only the long head has a second function. It also performs something called shoulder extension, which is when you move your arm down. And that's exactly why you'll always feel your triceps working on dumbbell pullovers. The lateral and medial heads aren't doing anything, but the long head is working very hard alongside your lats and your pecs to pull your arms down. And so because it crosses the shoulder, it'll be more contracted when your arm is down, like in a press down or in a kickback, and it'll be more stretched when your arm is up overhead. You can even try this out for yourself. Put your arm back behind your torso and you'll feel your long head get rock hard and you can lift your arm up overhead and you'll feel a really big stretch. And that's exactly what the overhead extension is doing. It's putting the long head under a much bigger stretch, but it's even better than that because the cable also provides super high tension in that stretched position. And I think that's why this 2023 study found that overhead extensions caused about 40% more triceps growth than press downs. Getting that long head into a more lengthened position seems to be doing something important for muscle growth. The overhead cable extension is our first triceps exercise going in S tier. Now, if you switch the bar out for a rope, you'll still get all the benefits of training the long head in a more lengthened position, but again, the rope will limit your ability to overload the triceps to some extent. I don't actually think it'd make a huge difference over the long term as long as you're pushing hard and you're tracking your progress, but I usually still prefer the bar, and so I'll put the overhead cable extension with the rope in A tier. 
The katana triceps extension gets its name from how you draw a pair of Japanese katana swords where you cross your arms overhead and grab the opposite side's cable. The best way to get into this exercise is to grab each side's cable with the same hand and then spin around 180 degrees while crossing your arms over. Or you can start with the cables crossed in front of you and then duck underneath and step through. Either way, if you start with the cables at around or just above waist height, you should end up with your arms in a position about 30 to 40 degrees forward relative to being flared out to the sides. This is called the scapular plane, which feels really comfortable for a lot of people. These also have the rare benefit of hitting both arms individually while still saving on time by getting both sides done at once. So that can be great for addressing any left to right imbalances while still not taking twice as long. These are definitely a personal favorite and I'd probably put them in S tier, but because they require a bit more setup and they can have a bit of a learning curve, I'm gonna go ahead and tentatively drop them back to A tier. The dumbbell French press will also get the long head very stretched and can be a bit faster to set up than cables. I like to do these seated because you'll be more stable, meaning you'll be able to direct more of that tension coming from the dumbbell directly to the triceps. One slight downside compared to the cables though is that the dumbbell will provide a circular resistance path, meaning you get a lot of tension on the triceps at the bottom and less tension at the top. That's not such a bad thing though because the stretched aspect does seem to be more important anyway, but I still prefer the more uniform feel of the cables. My main issue with these is that as your triceps get really strong, the dumbbells may get so big and bulky that they're kind of awkward to handle and it can put some unwanted strain on the wrists. I still like the French press and I still include these periodically, but I do prefer the cables and I'm gonna put these in B tier. Doing these one arm at a time actually solves a few of those issues. This way you can find a good angle to point your elbows in that feels a little more comfortable on your shoulders. And because you're doing one arm at a time, the dumbbell will be less bulky and awkward. They still don't offer the same smooth tension as cables do, but they're a really good option, especially if you only have access to dumbbells. One arm dumbbell tricep extensions are going in A tier. All right, so what about skull crushers? Well, let's see. They offer super high tension while the triceps are most stretched, especially if you arc the bar back behind your head instead of literally stopping at your skull. They should feel good, especially if you use an easy bar, which can ease up some unwanted strain on the wrists. And they're a great movement for overloading the triceps as you can always add a little weight or a rep from week to week. And even though you don't get uniform tension on the triceps, you can fix that by starting the range of motion with your elbows slightly back rather than straight up. This will immediately pull some tension into the fibers and from there you can arc the weight back. I think this is my favorite free weight triceps exercise. And even though some people find them a little less smooth than cables, I think they're great. I do them a lot and yeah, I think skull crushers belong in S tier. Dumbbell skull crushers are the exact same movement, except you get to train each arm individually, which is nice. I'm not exactly sure why, but the dumbbell skull crusher always feels a little more awkward to me than an easy bar or straight bar skull crusher. Maybe it's because the dumbbells are free moving and in that lying overhead position, I just find them harder to control. So while on paper, they should also be in S tier. In practice, I find them a little more awkward. And for that reason, I'm knocking them back to A tier. Now the JM press is an interesting one. People who like this exercise size really like this exercise. I think it's a bit overrated in the strength and powerlifting space. It's really just a hybrid between a close grip bench press and a skull crusher, where instead of lowering the bar back behind your head, like in a skull crusher, or lowering the bar down to your chest, like in a close grip bench, you meet in the middle and lower the bar down to your chin area. I don't know. I've been trying these for years and I always feel a little elbow pain or at least a little elbow discomfort whenever I do them. So they're losing a point in the feels good department for me. And because your arms won't be as far back behind your head, the JM press also won't get the long head quite as stretched as a skull crusher will. And I think if you're already doing some bench press and you're already doing some kind of overhead extension, I'm not sure that you really need a JM press. That said, I am a fan of hitting the triceps from a variety of different shoulder angles. And I do think that it's a solid lift that should have some strength carry over to your bench press. All things considered, I'm gonna put the JM press in B tier as a muscle builder. The Smith Machine JM Press fixes a few of those issues for me. Where you're locked into a fixed movement path, I do find it easier to really focus on using my triceps to move the weight, whereas with the barbell, my pecs and delts can sometimes take over more. I like JM Presses on the Smith Machine a bit better personally, and so I'm putting them in A tier. Triceps kickbacks are one of the very few exercises where you get to smash the triceps with the arm held back behind the torso. This is important because remember that the long head of the triceps will reach peak stretch when the arms are up overhead, but reach peak contraction when the arms are held back behind the torso. So this far, this is the first exercise we've covered that'll get the long head into a full squeeze. 
A lot of people do kickbacks bent forward, but if you think about it biomechanically, it's really the exact same thing as doing them more upright with the arm kick back. And even though there is research suggesting that the triceps respond better to long muscle lengths, it just isn't quite strong enough or robust enough for me to throw out every short and biased exercise. Plus, you can still get the lateral and medial heads decently stretched here, and the cable provides nice, even tension throughout the range of motion. They feel good to me, and I prefer to do these with slightly higher reps and really focus on getting a big, strong contraction in my triceps. Cable triceps kickbacks are going in A tier. Now, if you switch to a dumbbell, you do make the exercise less effective. That's because the dumbbell offers zero tension while the tricep is stretched, and then tension increases as the muscle contracts. This isn't great because we'd want to bias tension toward the stretched aspect as much as we can, and the dumbbell kickback does the exact opposite. That said, I don't think this is quite as big of a deal as people make it seem. The kickback is already better at overloading the shortened position, so the fact that the dumbbell's resistance curve leans into that isn't an automatic deal breaker. That said, if you do have access to cables, I definitely think you should do cable kickbacks instead. If you only have access to dumbbells, I think putting the dumbbell up overhead and doing overhead extensions will give you more bang for your buck. Dumbbell kickbacks are a little overhated online in my opinion, but they're still not one of my go-tos and I'm gonna put them in C tier. Close grip dips are another exercise that'll work the triceps with the arms back behind the torso. So they offer a really strong contraction of the long head, but because the arms aren't up overhead, the long head never really gets a deep stretch. Dips also don't feel the best to me. I find my shoulders get a bit cranky if I do them too much or too heavy, but I know tons of people who can do them with no problem. The dip's biggest upside is that as a compound exercise, it's great for progressive overload. You can always add a rep or two from week to week and use a weight belt to add weight as you get stronger. So the close grip dip probably should be an A or S tier on paper, but because it doesn't feel the best to me and I find my pecs and delts can easily take over, I'm dropping it back to B tier. Bench dips work the triceps in a similar shoulder position, and I do find these take my pecs and delts out of the movement much better so I can connect with my triceps a little more. That said, their fatal flaw is in the progressive overload department. As you gain tricep strength, the exercise simply isn't gonna be challenging enough in a normal rep range, and then you'll need to add weight. You can have a partner load some weight in your lap, but I always find this a bit awkward to balance. All things considered, I'm putting the bench dip in C tier. Machine dips are actually pretty solid. I don't do them a whole lot in my own training, just because I like cable kickbacks better, but I might add these back in for my next training phase. They're really just a more locked in version of a free weight dip, except if you can find a good machine, you'll have a little more stability, which might help you connect with your triceps better. That said, I still find my pecs and delts can take over on some of these machines, so I'm gonna leave the machine dip in B tier as well. Okay, the close grip bench press. Similar to the dip, its main selling feature is its incredible capacity for progressive overload. As your triceps get stronger, you'll be able to gradually add a little weight each week and keep your triceps growing for years to come. The bar will provide consistent tension throughout the range of motion, and to me, a close grip bench press feels great. I actually find I can engage my triceps a lot better here than on dips. That said, there's a slight problem with the long head. While presses will smash the medial and lateral heads extremely well, the long head actually doesn't get hit all that hard. That's because it's lengthening at the shoulder joint while simultaneously shortening at the elbow joint. So while I really wanna put the close grip bench press in S tier because it is such a great overloading movement, I have to drop it back to A tier just because I don't think that the long head will grow as well from these as they will from an overhead extension. But I definitely think it's an exercise that's worth doing if you're trying to grow your triceps. The close grip push up has very similar biomechanics, so it'll also hit the lateral and medial heads harder than the long head. But the main issue with the push up is that beyond the beginner stage, it's just really hard to overload them without doing a ton of reps or having a partner load weight on your back which can be a pain. I'm putting these in C tier. Diamond push-ups make the movement considerably harder by narrowing the base of support, and most people can feel their triceps working harder with the more flared elbow position that it puts you in. I actually really like diamond push-ups as a finisher exercise at the end of a workout, where you can just go for as many reps as you can get. They're actually a lot harder than they look, and even though they're still not as good as a close grip bench press for progressive overload, I think they're just good enough to get into B tier. So here's what you need to know. First, Pressing exercises will grow your triceps, but probably won't be enough on their own to maximize triceps development, especially not the long head. Second, you should definitely do some triceps isolation work for maximum growth. Third, the most effective isolation exercise is one that trains the triceps with the arms overhead. This is so the long head can experience high tension in a deep stretch. Fourth, for proportional triceps development, you should hit them from a variety of different shoulder angles, including at least one movement with the arms up overhead and one with the arms either down at the sides, like in a push down, and or one movement with the arm held back behind the torso, like a cable kickback. Now, if I had to crown just one exercise,
exercise. As the best of the best, it'd have to be the overhead cable tricep extension. This exercise will grow all three heads very effectively, and it's actually been validated as a superior exercise in long-term hypertrophy studies. And if I had to pick one as the worst of the worst, I guess it'd have to be the dumbbell kickback. It's not that it never has its place, but I do think there are better options. And you may have noticed that there were no F-tier exercises in this video, but there definitely were in my back tier list video. So to make sure that you don't put them in your program, you gotta check out this video over here. All right, that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.